Writing that song, I did not know that I would have to live out that song. Mm -hmm. You know, in the corners of my mind, I just can't seem to find a reason to believe that I can break free. I've been down for so long, feel like all hope is gone. But as I lift my hands, I understand that I should praise him through my circumstance. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Come on in here. This is Joyce Myers' Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk the real stuff of living it. I'm Ginger Stocky with my friends Jay and Aaron Cluley. And when we need a little extra help, we ask Miss Joyce, and she is always ready to jump right in. Because sometimes you need to talk about life with your girlfriends, so consider yourself one of us and come on in here because we have a new friend with us today, and we are so excited. So there are so many reasons that you know this amazingly talented woman. She is a multi-platinum gospel artist. She's won every award out there and multiple <laughs> multiples of them, Grammys, Stellar Awards, all of them. She has her own syndicated radio talk show. Mm -hmm. She's an author, a wife, a mother of three, Erica Campbell. Erica, thank you so much. So much. We're so pleasure. happy to have you with us. You're amazing. Thank She's you. Coming. I'm happy to be here. Yes. People so know her from Mary Mary, yes. of course. Yes. And um, so much great music that we've all appreciated and mm -hmm. enjoyed over the years. Well, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm particularly happy to have her here because I've known Erica for quite some time. First time I heard them sing Shackles, um, I just was like, how how do people do that? Aww. Like, how do people? And I just was like so amazed at yeah. the gifting and talent that they were and I was just like I wonder if I could ever do something like that but then fast forward years 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 down the road like a guy named Aesop Ward ended up connecting me with uh, the, the Marys yes. and I got to connect with them and sing with them for she a little traveled, bit traveled the same background <laughs> yeah I got to sing awesome. with them and be around them and get to be mentored by <clears throat> both of them but I, I like Erica has just been a, a, a great role model and Aww. a great person that now she's a, a pastor's wife as well. Yeah, and I'm all the things. All the things. So <laughs> I just have looked up to you so much. Thank you for being here. My, my pleasure. <laughs> oh, my God. Jay, wow. <laughs> Love you. Wow. We were just getting ready and going through a yes. lot to do this. And I do already feel like we're fast friends because we learned so much that we have in common. Yes. We both get entirely caught up in Instagram ads and have bought some <laughs> of the same it. things. And they don't work, but we then keep buying things. Exactly. We bought some of the same yes. things. That's awesome. Because they might work out the next yeah, time. Yeah, they might. You just might find that one. Because we're hopeful people. We, we walk in faith. Oh, we it's walk a spiritual in practice. I, think. I will try tonight. Literally walk in faith. Oh. Well, today we want to talk about a topic that I think will resonate with so many people. And Mary Mary has so many wonderful songs, but mm -hmm. Shackled is one of those songs yes. that just sticks in people's minds. Mm -hmm. It's It's been an important part of a lot of people's lives for many, many years. Yeah. So we want to talk about those things that shackle us yeah. and how to get free from them through praise, mm -hmm. and I, that may sound light, the praise part of it. Absolutely. Do not Minimize. underestimate Listen. the power of Absolutely. praise. Absolutely. Writing that song, I did not know that I would have to live out that song. Mm -hmm. You know, in the corners of my mind, I just can't seem to find a reason to believe that I can break free. I've been down for so long, feel like all hope is gone. But as I lift my hands, I understand that I should praise him through my circumstance. And that takes mm -hmm. us right to scripture. If you think of Paul and Silas, that's what they were doing. Yeah. They're literally in prison, literally bound. And praising God to get free. God opens the doors. And I, I believe that's what happens. And did I know that when we were writing the song? Not really. Mm -hmm. You know, I was maybe 27, 26, 27. Mm -hmm. I'm 49. That's a long way. And that message has been consistent. Many times the second verse rang true. Everything that could go wrong all went wrong at one mm -hmm. time. Yeah. You know, um, but God has been faithful, and as I trust Him, I'm able to get through. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Doesn't mean it's not yeah. difficult. Yeah. yeah. But trusting God is how I have gotten yeah. through so many different things in my life. Takes shackles off my Come feet on. so I, I can, can dance. dance. Sing G. No, I think I someone really should. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave it with me. <laughs> no, but those those are such true, beautiful words. So what you were saying, you didn't know how you would have to live them. How have you had to live them? Ooh, um, me and my sister did a reality show, and during that reality show, my father passed. Mm -hmm. And that very same week, 
uh, I had to go sing. Hmm. We had a concert and obligation that we could not, we couldn't not do it. And so I brought my entire family with me and we were able to make it through, but we were filming all of this. So I didn't have the opportunity to break. I didn't have the opportunity to go Mm -hmm. and ball up and sit in a corner, which I wish I could, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, starting a church. When I didn't really want to. Sorry, I know this doesn't sound very <laughs> no, Christian to me, no, but that's all right to say. Oh, thank y'all. Yeah. You, guys yeah. my, yeah. you guys are my kind. Yeah. Yes. No, when my husband told me he was going to start a church, I was going, "Hello, we're in the music industry. What are we? What are you doing?" First, it started with Bible study. Hmm. Then he went to seminary. Then he started hanging with all these bishops and preachers. And I'm going, "Lord, we talked about this. We talked about this." <laughs> um, and it was rough because I didn't give my yes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And I realized that I was watching him do something while he was dealing with his wife who was like, oh. and the Holy Spirit literally tugged on my heart. And she, he was saying, the weight that he feels is because you won't say yes. Mm. And you're not saying yes to him. You're saying yes to me. And so it was wow. a Sunday morning and he was up preaching and I could feel his weight because I'm on the front row. Mm. <laughs> cute, real cute, cute. church. <laughs> um, and after service, I went and gave him a hug and I said, I'm with you. And I'm with you 100%. And I'm with this church and I'm with whatever God says he wants us to do. And I felt his release. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I began to really repent in my heart because I was like, man, I wonder how tough it was for your very wife to be like, yeah, I don't want to do this at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because we're a team. There's just yeah. been so many things. Um, <laughs> Even when I started my solo career, my sister was going through some things in her marriage and she was like, I just can't do it right now. But the Lord clearly told me to go. So I released this song called A Little More Jesus. Mm. I put the song out and I'm really excited. And so the day the song comes out, I go to iTunes to check the reviews to see, will they like me? Like they like Mary Mary? And the first comment I saw was, oh, no, honey, you don't need a little more Jesus. You need a little more Tina because you're just a pretty one. You can't sing. Oh. Like her. And I just had to keep going. You know, mm. I, I grew up kind of tough. You know, my father was really sarcastic. Uh, my family's kind of tough. So I've heard people go, oh, that's horrible. So it didn't break me, but it hurt me, yeah. Yeah. you know, because um, I was like, Lord, if you told me to do it, could you tell them so they could be nice? Yeah. yeah. You know? But they're not always going to be nice. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it makes you a little more resilient, a little more tough. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's kind of the training that you have to go through mm-hmm. to get to where God, when God is going to take you somewhere high in life, when he's going to expand and enlarge you, that means you're going to have to face something and you cannot give up. You have to trust that God is in the middle of it that this is building a story, think about it. If you see once upon a time and happily ever after and everything in the middle is a fluff, you're like, this story's not interesting. Mm -hmm. There has to be hills and valleys. There has to be heartache and heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's how God gets you to the sweet spot, you know? So there's there's been some... Things, lots more than that. That's just the, the three I picked first. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to talk about all of them. So let's let's jump in right now and find out what Joyce has to say, really dig into the Word about what it's like when times get hard and what we need to do. We have weapons. There's ways that we can fight the enemy, but they're not what you would think <laughs> because he's a spirit. So you got to fight him in the spirit. And the way you fight him is totally opposite of what you would think. You overcome evil with good. You got to get this today. Come on, this is a big secret. You got to know who your enemy is and you got to know how to fight him. Satan is your enemy and you don't fight him the way that you would think. It's exact opposite. When when he's mean to you, you be good to somebody else. That's how you fight the devil. (laughs) When somebody hurts you, you pray for them. Oh, this is so good if you can get this today. Lord have mercy. Now, praise and worship are both weapons of warfare. Keep singing. And if you don't sing well, then hum. Come on. You know what praise is? Praise, I mean, it's, it's probably a lot of different things, but I love what the Greek says about praise. It's a, it's a tale or a narrative or a story that you tell about the goodness of God. 
So praise is not just when we come together like this and we sing songs. Praise is you having lunch with somebody and instead of talking about your problem again, come on, instead of talking about your problem again that they're already really tired of hearing, Try to find something that God has done for you at some time in your life and tell a good tale on God. See, the more, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to give us problems and he wants us to rehearse them over and over and over. I don't mean to be rude when I say this, but just, <laughs> I just gotta do it. Just shut up about your problems. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes we need to vent and talk to somebody. We'll do it and then get over it. Everybody's got problems. And, and it, it doesn't help. The more we focus on our problems, the bigger they get. We've got other things that we can talk about. And I don't know about you, but I am so tired of talking about everything that's wrong in the world. Lord have mercy. I hate the news. Just like, yeah. I mean, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you can just look at the headlines and get depressed. And I know we have real problems and we can't ignore them, but let's also talk about some of the good things that God is doing in the earth. Amen? We need to do that. Such great advice, <laughs> wow. and it really all is so scriptural. I don't want to be rude, but I just have to say this. Right. <laughs> yeah. shut just shut up. up. I'm going to say that sometime, but don't be offended because <laughs> be Joyce told us. Said it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. yeah. What do you think about some of those things that, that really are right from scripture? You know, Jesus turned the other cheek, mm. you know, praying for that person who's hurt you, doing the opposite of what it feels like you should do to fight back. Mm -hmm. And yet when you do the opposite, you're fighting in a powerful way. Tell, yeah. tell me about your experience in those areas. What I've been going through over the past couple of years uh, in my, my, my failed marriage now, I don't, I, I'm used to saying my marriage, but you know, going through the process of divorce, um, really praying for my ex has been difficult, mm -hmm. but I, I do it. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts to do. Yeah. It hurts yeah. to do. Yeah. But I am willing myself to continue. Because it feels unfair. It feels mm -hmm. unfair. Yeah. It, feels it unfair. feels like it feels like uh, like you're a loser. It feels like you're losing yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Like as if, mm -hmm. and then, and there's a part of you. And that's one reason why you know going through this 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 grieving process of of my of my family not being at all what I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, it, it gives me more empathy to understand when people go through grieving processes and lose things and, and lose people mm -hmm. and um, failed relationships. It just gives me so much more empathy and sympathy to understand mm -hmm. wh why people do talk a lot about it. Because mm -hmm. talking about it for me um, has, and that's why I've been grateful for this platform, mm -hmm. to even be able to share my process and not necessarily gripe about it, but just be honest about it. Mm -hmm. um, it does... The more I talk about it in, in certain ways to help other people, it does take the power away from mm -hmm. it. That is one of the ways I've learned how to unshackle myself from it. Because if you keep yourself muzzled, and that's why I believe in counseling so much. I mm -hmm. believe in going to people that are qualified to help you, to give you tools, find a good pastor, mm -hmm. a good person, a good you know accountability, but also counseling to help you get through it. Because it, it does help to talk about it, but not whine about it. There's right. a difference between... Yeah. Communicating what you're going through to relieve, because what it does when I talk about it, it just it lets some takes of that the air out. It takes, takes some pressure. of that pressure yeah. because, like, it, it's an isolating place to be when you're when you're going through something in the moment. And I've just been one of those Christians that was just like, as I go through something that's really really hard, I don't want to wait until I've gotten to the other side. Right. Yeah. And people people need to see the pathway. E exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and it's okay. Yeah. It's a okay. A lot of people have spoken Christianese through their problems and they're never honest. And I've seen people like that totally leave faith yeah. because yeah. Uh, you need to release sometimes. Mm -hmm. You need to be honest. And But when you learn to keep God in the center of it, it changes everything. It does. I was going through a tough time and I was in church and worship was going and I had my hands up and they're singing and the song's great. I'm going, Lord, this is unfair, but I'm here because I'm not going anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I want to serve the devil. I only want to serve you, but I'm not happy. My hands are up. And I go, 
could you just let me feel your presence? And I felt the power of God wash over me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Mm. And I knew in that moment that everything would be okay. Yeah. I knew the situation didn't change, but he was mm-hmm. changing me in the situation. Mm-hmm. And he can't change you if you're not in the situation. Mm-hmm. You had to ask that in I that moment. I had to ask for it. And right. do that sacrifice of praise. That's what the Bible talks about. Yeah. That sacrifice of praise. It is hard yeah. Absolutely. to praise when you're in that place. Jesus was on the cross mm-hmm. praying for mm. them. Yeah. yeah, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Yeah. You don't know I'm anointed. Yeah. You don't know I'm blessed. You don't know that there's mm-hmm. purpose on my life. So when you inflict whatever you inflict or say whatever you say, you don't realize who I am. But if I know who I am, yeah. I know that's a dart from the enemy yep. trying to stop me. I grew up in a in a small Kojic church, evangelistic church of God in Christ. And you know, my pastor wasn't highly educated, but he was highly anointed. Mm-hmm. And he was saying, if the devil's not chasing you, you might be running with him. <laughs> that's good. He said, if you never face any adversity and everything is fine, you might need to look to your right to left and see. You got a few demons following uh-huh. you. He said, because when you are tearing down the enemy's kingdom because you're praising God, you're living right, you're being an example, you're being a witness, the enemy's mad at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is upset. So you're going to have to fight. Now, you've got heaven on your side. You got supernatural reinforcement to help you through these things, but... You know, you got to go through some stuff. If you want to build a muscle, my trainer says you have to tear it down first. I have mm-hmm. to live heavy weight in order to burn the fat. Right. You yeah. know, I've got to run. I've got to do these things. The weight doesn't come off. Everything that, that is on here is because I ate it on, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if I want it off, I got to work, work it. it off. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. And so sometimes some of the problems we have to work our way, praise our way. Sometimes talk our we got to talk it out, you know, mm-hmm. just to kind of get to a place uh, of healing. And when Jesus is in the center of that, you can heal and then be able to share it with somebody. And it's not just a test, but a testimony. Yeah. It's yeah. not a mess. It's now it's a message because yeah. you allowed God in the center of the mm-hmm. situation. How do we find that balance between talking it out? And talking about it right. to the nth degree. Um, I like what you said that you you had to find that place of what to say and still be praying and and still be doing those things that God was asking you to do. So how do you find that balance in all of it? Because really, we just want other people to feel our hurt. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so often why... Why we talk? I think for me, I I have to check my heart a lot mm-hmm. before I open my mouth because I know I know if my motive is not right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, and I just want you to tell me I'm so sorry that mm-hmm. they are wrong. Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna make you feel better about it. Mm-hmm. I know when that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I also know who I'm talking to. So for me, I have to think through like what is the goal here and who are you talking with? Yes, because. If I tell you guys, I know I'm going to get godly wisdom. You'll you'll be on my we'll side. We'll say they're wrong though. You are because they but, are. But then we'll give you. You sorry. are. But then you will push me. <laughs> <laughs> I will get both from you. You will get there. It's balanced. <laughs> um, but I know that at the end of it, you're going to push me to Jesus. Yes. I think as Christians, if we are quick to say, "No, God's got you. It's going to be fine," then it makes me feel like I'm a crazy person right. or yeah. I don't have enough faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm you not shouldn't doing this right. feel sad. You yeah. shouldn't. Yes. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I can't stand, yeah. I can't stand spiritual bypassing. Mm-mm. No, <laughs> I can't. Like where you zoom right back past things that either are, are even happening in our world. Yeah. Because you know you sp- speed past it with scripture, and it's like, wait, well, we also have to. We're human, so mm-hmm. let, let's let's identify what the issue mm-hmm. is. But still, it depends on their experience. Very it true. It depends on where they are. So mm-hmm. my mom grew up really old school. She grew up hearing, "If you make your bed hard, you lay in it." Mm-hmm. They didn't say go to therapy back mm-hmm. in the day. So this conversation is kind of new for some, yeah, you know, true. believers who've been in faith for a long time. But I've found that you can't. Praise a God you don't trust. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of people who serve God, but they don't really trust him mm-hmm. because this happened and that happened and that happened. And, you know, the devil's not an option, so I'll stay here in church, but I won't ever get to the fullness of what God mm-hmm. has for me because yeah. I'm not standing on the promise. I'm standing on my pain, mm. you know? And so I'll sing this song, mm. but I but I remember, God, that you didn't bring me through this, mm-hmm. right? We know that song Fred Hammond has, has it, and there's a line that says, God will do what he said he would do. Mm-hmm. He will stand by his word. He he will come through. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. But what I realize about that song is, if you don't know what he said, you don't know what he'll do. 
Mm-hmm. If you're not in his word, then you don't know, the scripture says, mm-hmm. thanks be unto God, right. who causes us to triumph. Yeah. If you're not in his word, you don't know that he sees the tears mm-hmm. that women cry. If you're not mm-hmm. in his word, you don't understand the promises that he has for us, that with every trial, he's going to bring you out, you know? That's so and good. So you've yeah. got to know yeah. what the word says about your situation. A lot of times when I'm going through, I'll start Googling, Googling, what does the Bible say about this? You know, I'd love to say that I know all the scriptures and where they're all found and what they all mean. I don't. Right. So sometimes Google will help Google's me. Google's a wonderful thing for that. <laughs> yeah. And the scripture will come and I'll go, yeah. gosh, that's what I needed. God, I thank you. So now I'll, I'll say this over my life. I won't declare mm-hmm. that they were mean or I got fired or I didn't get the deal or someone said no or someone stole money or I had to change an employee. I won't decla- I'll declare that God is going to provide for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll, provi- I'll I'll declare that he's my comforter, that yeah. he's my joy, he's my strength. You know. Well, what do you, I have a question for everybody then. But what do you do when you feel like I'm just gonna be real? Mm-hmm. That it feels like the weapon formed against you did prosper. Yeah. That <laughs> like, what's yeah. The, when it feel like it, 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 it's mm-hmm. winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know how does it? Yeah, you, yeah. But do we as believers think we're not supposed to go through? The Bible is full of everybody going through mm-hmm. and God bringing them out. True. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes. Especially growing up Kojic, mm-hmm. you're taught if I'm a good girl, if I do everything, mm-hmm. nothing bad will ever happen. If something We've happened, heard Jay say that so many it's times. It's my fault. Yeah. Job. You know, yeah. his friends were like, uh, Job, you sure you didn't do anything? Mm-hmm. There's no way yeah. you'd be going through this bad if you didn't do anything. Right. Mm-hmm. That wasn't the case. And yeah. a lot of times, you know, I, I've, and I've said that to God, God, I didn't do anything. Yeah. But when you really trust God in the process, then when you're in the throes and they're saying things and things hurt. You can go, God, but I know you're going to bring me out. I won't stay here forever. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can hold on to. Yeah. Well, we're going to check back in, let Joyce share a little bit more about exactly what you were asking Mm -hmm. about what do you do when you don't feel Mm -hmm. that God is doing what He says He's going to do. God is working in your life, every single one of you. God is working in your life right now in ways that you cannot feel, don't see, and don't understand. And just because what's going on in your life right now doesn't feel good doesn't mean God's not working. And everything that that we go through, we need to lift up our voice and say, God, I believe you're working in my life right now. I'm expecting something good. Don't let the devil drag you into that worry and and fear and mental torment that's going to steal every day that you have. Exodus 3, 9 through 14. Now behold, the cry of the Israelites has come to me, and I've also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, he's talking to Moses, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will surely be with you. And this is the sign to you that I have sent you. The sign that God has sent us is when he's with us. I know that God is with me when I preach the gospel. I know that. I don't see him. I don't maybe feel him in the way that we might think about feeling, but I do feel him in that I know that there's no way that I could do this if it wasn't God. And God is with you in your situation. Some of you are in very difficult situations. And yet in the midst of that, you have joy and peace and you have hope and only God can give us that. God is with you. Just because you have a problem, that does not mean that God has abandoned you. God is with you. When you have brought this people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain of Horeb or Sinai. And Moses continued and he said to God, Behold, when I come to the Israelites and I say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, Well, then what's his name? What shall I say to them? And I love the way God explains himself. He doesn't give you a whole lot of information. And God said to Moses, I am who I am and what I am. (laughs) And I will be what I will be. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites. I am. I am here right now. The great I am who's everywhere all the time, watching over every person, involved in every person's life. Even right now, chasing those people that are living in sin and trying to woo them into a relationship. 
So let's talk about the importance of understanding that that I am, mm-hmm. that God is there. He is who He is. He is working. And Erica, I love what you said about needing to understand who He is mm-hmm. in order to stand on those promises. Yeah. But we've all had those times in life, at least I have, where I've said, God, are you? Mm-hmm. You know, are, I know you say you are, Yeah. but I'm not... I'm not feeling it. Feel I'm not it. seeing it. Mm-hmm. There's no evidence right now. Mm-hmm. And that is where you have two choices. You you stand in faith yeah, or you keep crying and whining and being unhappy. Yeah. And I've done both <laughs> really, really well. You oh, know, same. I did. <laughs> same. I've done uh-huh. so much. But that that whole thing about praising Him through our circumstances, mm-hmm. when everything goes wrong all at the same time, yeah. um, how do you hold on to that I am? For me, I, I didn't want to let God down. But then again, I'm not holding him up, so how could I let him down, right? <laughs> but I didn't I, – I know when people come and, and they're ready to receive, um, I really kind of think about others. And I truly, truly, truly believe that God's going to take care of me. I just – with tears in my eyes, I believe. In a hospital bed, I believe. In a divorce courtroom, I believe. I truly believe that God is going to take care of me. I always say it won't be the day I want or the way I want, but I believe from my nose to my toes that God is going to take care of me. So even when I don't see the answer, I don't feel the answer, it feels unfair. You know, I'm in the truck and I still have to work. And, you know, my, I can be like dead dog tired. And then there's a line of people and I have to shake their hands and say hello. And I'm going, God, this just doesn't feel fair. But then that peace that passes all understanding kind of just kind of carries me a little bit and allows me to do it. And those are the times where I know he's real. He's not going to leave me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me because I've experienced it. So with every test and every trial, you believe a little bit more. Like I, I went totally crazy on that trial. This one I only went a little crazy. <laughs> Maybe the next baby trial, trial I won't go crazy at all. Yeah. You know? So There's you just keep going. Future. Every experience you learn and you grow in faith a little bit more. I think that's why when you see like those seasoned old saints, they can have all kind of bad news and they'll just say, Well, praise the Lord, baby, it's gonna be all right. And if you're in your twenties, you go, How do you know it's gonna be all right? You know, you're yeah. losing it. But as which with each experience with God, my faith has grown, mm-hmm. you know, my capacity to deal with more mm-hmm. stuff, you know has expanded. And I'm just, I, I just trust God. I just love God. I, I really do. And even when I'm frustrated or irritated, what down in my soul, I'm going, but you know, Jesus is going to come through. Mm-hmm. You know it. Mm-hmm. But you've got to, if you don't believe that, then maybe you never get to that victory because yeah. you're allowing the lies of the enemy, you know, oh, God's forgotten about you. Oh, he's way too busy to take care of your stuff. Oh, there's starving kids in another country. He's taking care of something else. You know, America's in turmoil. He'll get to you later. You know, he's always whispering in your ear. And you've got to learn to just tell the devil, just shut up. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't think I'm crazy, okay? But sometimes in my car, I roll those windows down. I go, I'm not talking to you today. Get out of my car. (laughs) <laughs> get out, I love get that. out. I'm sick of this. No, I don't want to think about it anymore. I'm Your kids aren't victory. around, right? <laughs> oh, sometimes <laughs> I do it in front of kids. Out. I don't want them jumping out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm teaching them how to do it too. That's Absolutely, warfare. Absolutely, yes. I'm teaching them too. Sometimes I'm walking through my house. I'm going, no, peace lives here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about beating up the devil. I want to beat him down. And I can beat him down <laughs> with my praise, with my kindness, you know, yeah. when I'm forgiving. The enemy's like, oh, we couldn't get her. Happens all the time. Right before I'm going on stage, it's always something. Mm-hmm. Promoter doesn't have the money. All the flights got canceled. Mm-hmm. The guitar player didn't make it. Like, it's mm-hmm. always something. And you just yeah. have to keep going and trust God, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've had some major things like like that as well, like right before... A, a major women's conference that we've been working on for months, mm-hmm. I would get a call that you know, your dad has cancer. Jeez. I would get a call that the baby that your daughter's carrying has a, a heart issue. And there's nothing you could do at that point except for first cry mm-hmm. and cry out to God. And then it's just like you're saying, it's how am I going to respond? Mm-hmm. How am I going to fight back? Mm -hmm. Because I'm a fighter, Mm -hmm. and I'll fight one way or the other. I'll fight by getting really (laughs) upset and acting pretty ridiculous, or I'll fight back by doing this amazing thing that God's given me the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. I think about what I owe Him. Mm -hmm. He owes me nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. He owes me nothing. So the fact that I'm going through these hard things, 
I don't like it, but it shouldn't be a surprise mm-hmm. because we all do. Yeah. And that's this life that we're in. God doesn't owe me an answer to my whys because mm-hmm. I ask a lot of whys. Yeah. But He's giving me these amazing opportunities to share in front of people, to praise with those people, to pray for them, to have a platform that I'm so grateful for. Yeah. And so I, I think that's where, okay, I'm going to fight back because the main thing that the devil wants is to keep me from doing Absolutely. this thing that God's given that me the opportunity it. to do. <laughs> and if instead... Yeah. It's that opposite thing that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Instead of doing what I feel like doing, doing the opposite, go out there, telling people, being real, telling mm-hmm. people what's going on, because I've done that. Mm-hmm. This is what's happening in my life, yeah. but we're going to praise God together because I trust Him, mm-hmm. and He's going to do something in this situation. And when we can do that, people see it, and it's important in their life too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it not only activates the Holy Spirit working in our life, yeah. but it inspires other people for him yeah. to work in theirs. Let's talk about what some of those shackles are. Because for me, that can be one of the shackles. For for me, it could be anger. Hmm. A shackle can be anger. I can get really mad. I can get mad at the circumstance. I can get mad at God for not doing what I wanted Him to do. Mm-hmm. And if I don't praise through those shackles, mm-hmm. then I won't be able to see what God really does want to bring forth. So mm-hmm. there, there are so many different shackles in our lives and... Mm-hmm. A lot of mine are myself, mm-hmm. self-imposed oh, shackles. Yeah. Um, you know, they're 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 not always. There are so many things that happen in our life that can snatch our freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not what God wants for us. Mm-hmm. So, what are some of the shackles that we've all had to praise through? Yeah, I've had to praise through disappointment. Mm. Mm, that's a good yeah, one. you know, like whether it's that's disappointment huge. in people, disappointment in mostly people. Like, <laughs> and then there's disappointment and then there's, with people. There's disappointment with uh, people, people. And, oh, yeah, and church people, people, and then work people, and then family people. people. You know, yeah. the way I, I, I always know. say, people are very peoply. Yeah, they're they very really people. Yeah, they are. yeah. 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 so yeah. disappointment in that, and also disappointment in because I'm like I'm a planner. I love strategy. I love like getting things in a certain order, in a certain way, when those plans, because I've always been a person that said, like, if I make a plan, I'm going to submit it to God. You know, write the vision, make a plan, then submit to God. But when all the plans, it's just like, yeah. I, it's just, every plan, I'm tired of planning it because yeah. it just doesn't seem like I have yeah. any control over it. So mm-hmm. just disappointment in even, like, things just completely pivoting without any warning. So, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. No, you got you. You oh, breathe cool. first. We both took a deep breath together. <laughs> <laughs> like you're yeah. gonna say, oh, Lamas. 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 Let's do that. Uh, for me, I, a lot of it in the past couple of years has been my desire to control a situation. So, what you said reminds me of that. Um, sometimes it comes out in the form of anxiety or fear or just anger that I can't control. And so, I I find those times I've shared with you guys in the past in the shower or the kitchen sink is where the Lord and I have so many talks about those things. <laughs> and so praise and worship has become what I go to. And so I'll sing so loud in my house, more poor children. <laughs> but I think that I can feel that warfare of mm-hmm. taking off those shackles when you are, when I'm dealing with those set, yeah. those things. Yeah. You know, I've, I've learned, um, cause I have a big circle. I have seven sisters. I have a bunch of girlfriends and church first lady friends, and I've realized that the enemy uses things that appear to be a Christ-like character trait, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. like being quiet when you speak up, but using that against you. Mm -hmm. Um, The enemy will use being tired against you, but we Mm -hmm. feel like it's more Christian-like to work ourselves to the bone. And then Mm -hmm. by the time you get somewhere to minister, you're tired and drained and have low tolerance. And so I've learned to not let my own desire to be Christ-like, good girl syndrome, be nice mm-hmm. and be kind and be there and be present. When sometimes the spirit, the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap yeah. and get rest so I can be fully prepared. And so I don't, I, I try not to let my own drive shackle me, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. I, it's, it's weird because it's like, I get that. but you're working for Jesus. But sometimes take a nap or yeah. go on vacation with your kids, you know, yeah. um, doing those things. So sometimes our desire, I, I, I truly believe that the enemy knows that I'm never going to leave Jesus. So he'll try to use me 
He'll try to manipulate my desire to please God against me, Mm -hmm. you know, by not taking good care of my body. And if this is the temple, if this is my temple, I've got to take good care of this so I can work for God. I've got to make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind, that that I've got my peace, you know, that I am settled, that I'm eating right. Some of the natural things that we kind of don't pay attention Mm -hmm. to, I think that's how we honor God as well when we make sure that we're taking good care of ourselves and we don't allow um, serving in the church. You know, some people have served in the church so much, their families fell apart, you know? Mm -hmm. They were so busy serving Jesus, they forgot that they had to be human. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's given us everything pertaining to life and godliness, then you can't just lean on godliness and forget about your life, you know? My first few years, me and my husband didn't celebrate our wedding anniversary probably for the first five years because we were working. I was out singing Shackles and all the other songs, you know, I was out working for Jesus. And then probably about nine years in, he was going... I really miss my wife. And mm. I said, and I really miss my husband. And so I had to change change some things. I had to start saying no. I had to start mm-hmm. prioritizing this family that I believe yeah. God gave to me. So there has to be a balance. And so uh, those are the things that I probably struggle with most. Could I could probably be a workaholic. But yeah, that's I try good. my best not to be. <laughs> yeah. No, I think about all the people that are connecting to that and, and all the other things mm-hmm. that can shackle us, insecurity, yeah. doubt in our own lives, uh, and so many things that the power of praise mm-hmm. can break through. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, there's there's another one. This is a big one for me. I mentioned it briefly, but it's that why question, asking God why mm-hmm. this is happening, why this is not happening, why mm-hmm. he's not doing what I want. Mm-hmm. So we're going to check in one last time with Joyce as she talks a little bit about that. Why? God, why? (laughs) The question that never goes away, why? And you can ask it all you want to, but it's the question that rarely gets an answer. (laughs) Even Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He didn't get an answer. The Bible doesn't say that God said anything back to him. So the next thing Jesus said was, into your hands I commit my spirit. I love that. I mean, all of our pain together would never equal what Jesus went through on the cross for us. We don't even begin to fathom. How many of you know how heavy and icky and awful it makes you feel when you do something like you mess up really bad? I mean, not, not like one of these little sins. I mean, you really just... Okay, now just imagine having every sin of every human that ever lived put on you all at one time and trying to bear that. I can't even fathom the pain. And he said, why have you forsaken me? We often feel in our pain that we've been forsaken, but we never are because he's Emmanuel, God with us always with us, in us, under us, around us, never leaves us nor forsakes us. And I just feel very strongly tonight that I'm supposed to impress on you that no matter what you're going through, God is with you. And he will redeem it. He'll make something beautiful out of it. Now, this doesn't all just happen magically. There are things that you will need to do to cooperate with God. I'm not going to give you a list of do these five things and your problems will be over. There is no such list. I'm just going to tell you to follow God. Follow God. Whatever he shows you to do, do it. And if there's nothing for you to do, then stand firm and wait on him. Sometimes he takes a lot longer than we'd like, but he knows what he's doing. The only time you realize that is after you've gone through it and you look back and see the good things that came out of what you went through. How many of you can say that you would not be the person you are today if you had not gone through some of the things that you went through? So, the question never goes away is why. But yet Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. I love that. It's almost like saying, don't even think that you're smart enough to solve your own problems. (laughs) If I could just do a Joyce Meyer translation on that, that's what I would say. (laughs) Don't even think that you're smart enough to figure out what you should do in this situation. And I love this. 
It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. That's hard stuff. Ooh, yeah, very hard. It oh, is. Yeah. It's hard stuff. But it, if you've lived it, mm-hmm. if you've been in the middle of it um, and, and tried it both ways, mm-hmm. you have an A and a B to choose, yep. um, I think you learn a lot about who God is through that. It's like that verse in, it, is it? Habakkuk or Habakkuk or I call it Habakkuk. 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 I've never heard it anyway. Like that. Habakkuk. 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 Though the fig Habakkuk. tree Habakkuk. does not bloom, <laughs> though everything goes wrong, essentially, yep. mm-hmm. I will still praise yep. you. Yeah, and I I think that's what it has to come back to, mm-hmm. because when we make that conscious choice, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when we make that decision, it, it changes what's happening in the spiritual realm around yeah, us. Yeah. God yeah. honors that choice that we make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody's praise looks different. You yeah. Know? yeah. Some people, you know, love to dance around their house to worship music. You know, some people, you know, love to go to church. Some people will turn on, you know, choice on YouTube. That's my mom's favorite thing. She's <laughs> always watching her on YouTube. You know, whatever you do to get connected, just get connected to get out of that that mode, that mindset, that that doubt, that fearful place, mm-hmm. you know, where the enemy is is whispering. I always tell my kids, I was like, you know, the cartoons that you see with an angel on one shoulder and the devil. I was like, that's real. Just make sure you always respond to the angel and not the devil. You know what I mean? Because he's always trying to get at you. But when you realize that God is faithful, when you realize that he will bring you out, then yeah. even in your sad times, you can go, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yeah. And, and it's so important in all of us saying that to say that we realize that it's really hard to do. Oh, yeah. so hard. We're not just so saying, hard. just do so this hard. and it'll all be great. I'm going yeah. to like literally yeah. right in this very moment. you know. Um, it, and what I've realized is that praising God is a lot of times doing exactly what he's called you to be and do, whatever that thing is, mm-hmm. you know, because that's what Satan wants to stop. He huh. wants to stop purpose. Mm-hmm. He wants to stop God's plan for your life. And I just want to encourage anybody that's listening. It's like, I know for me, I'm, I'm my voice, whether it be singing, talking, whatever, he wants to muzzle me. Yeah. I know that. And I and I'm serving them notice right now because it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. It's not. I'm not going to stop singing. I'm not going to stop t- talking. I'm not going to stop using the words that God's given me, speaking the word of God over my life. I'm not going to stop. So Amen. he can cut that stop. He can cut it. But it talk. It comes from me a- actually taking authority and saying out loud what he's not going to do. And mm-hmm. so anybody that's watching, just please, absolutely, whatever that thing is, just speak it out loud mm-hmm. and and say like saying you will not win. Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to stop the purpose. Of God yeah. in my life. Yeah. And like one of the things that it was like a visual that came to me while we were talking was like, God is trying to birth something. And this is me for me personally. He gave it to me and I'm sharing it with you guys. Like a, like a woman having a baby, like he's birthing something inside of me. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was having my daughter, there were certain points when I would push, but I wouldn't say anything because I just felt muzzled. Like the pain was so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting, like it was so difficult that I just, I was just like, Mm-hmm. And I'll just and I'll, and then the doctor would like say breathe. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Br- you yeah. have to breathe. You and breathe I didn't want to breathe because it felt like if I would make noise, it would hurt worse. Mm-hmm. But honestly, when I would just bear down and breathe and ah, scream and let yeah. it out, like it, it, the the pain would not it'd still be there, but it would be less. And so yeah. I just encourage whatever That's that good, praise Jay. looks it is like, more effective. It's yeah. more effective. Like don't. Stay silent. Yeah, don't yeah. underestimate a good old hauler. A good old hauler. Yeah. Don't <laughs> listen. If you need to take a drive, maybe you live in an apartment. I don't know, or if you're in the country somewhere, go out in the grass and just, oh, you know. So sometimes true. you just gotta get it out, you know, mm-hmm. because you know you're in the fight. I'm not getting out of this fight. Mm-hmm. I gotta get my, my. I've gotta get through this, yeah. right? But I need some extra strength. Oh yeah. God, give me a little bit more. Mm. You know, yeah. you just kind of have to bear down. A little growl. Yeah. A little growl. A little bit. I mean, that, push listen. That Think about the lioness. Think about the lion kingdom. The lion goes out to, the lioness goes out to Mm -hmm. get the food. I'm sure she has to growl and fight and fight with other animals. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's, it's that way in life. We're fighting. We got to get, we got to get that glory and that grit. You know, you got to be graceful and gritty sometimes. And when you learn, you can go through with authority and know I'm not staying in this place forever. I'm coming through this and I'm coming through it with victory because I'm holding on to Jesus Mm -hmm. and he's given me everything I need to be everything I need. I say that to myself. Erica, you have everything you need to be everything you need. He's already equipped you. He's already prepared you. Mm-hmm. He's already made the way. The, the finish line isn't moving. So if you stop, mm-hmm. that just means you won't get there. 
So you got to keep going. Yeah. Go slow, but keep going. You yeah. know, broken leg, keep going. Limping, keep going. Yeah. Get to the finish line. And it feels like sometimes that we're laying down and rolling over. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. If I pray for my enemy, yeah. is, is that laying down and rolling right. over and letting them do what they want to do? And yet there's so much strength in that. There's strength in saying God's word yeah. instead of saying the vile things we want right. desperately yeah. to say. Curse you. Uh-huh. Exactly. Them, it's use you. not <laughs> laying down. Well, well, well. Yeah. <laughs> It's fighting hard. It's being that lioness, yeah, and that that needs to growl yeah. and and be who God says she can be yeah. instead yeah. of for being your kids silent. And, exactly, yeah. declaring that yeah. that He won't steal your children's mind and yes. all that they watch and all that they see. You know, declaring that they will be filled with the Spirit, that they will love. You know what their mom does. You know, I would hate to serve God and my kids are at church like. God, I can't wait to get out of here. Mm-hmm. I want them to love the same God. So I know the enemy is fighting them. So I have to fight with my praise. I have to fight in my house mm-hmm. by turning on worship music, you know? And then I go through their little feet on their phone and go, not interested, unfollow, uh-huh. <laughs> not subscribe to that, don't want you watching that, you know? And then what I'll do is I'll go and I'll click on Joyce and I'll click on Joel Olstein and I'll <laughs> click on Mary Mary and make sure that you that there's some gospel stuff, some Jesus yeah, is going to come right. up in your feet. <laughs> To make sure that my kids love the Lord. I've got to, do, I know God's got them, but I've got to do my part. And it's, I won't just let them go. Some people are like, oh, well, your kids, they want to do what they want to do. And they have their own opinion. The enemy is not saying that. Mm-mm. The enemy is like, I want them to watch my stuff, sing my stuff. I want them to pay attention. I want to kind of just pull them slowly, build up that rebellion in their heart. Like we got to go to work mm-hmm. as praying women, warring yeah. in the spirit over our families, our lives, our ministries. One of my favorite warring postures is in, I, I would stand in praise and worship all day long. I cannot sing like any of you in this room, but I don't care. As long as I, <laughs> I can be so, You look so happy when you do it. I love it more than anything. And my favorite <laughs> thing to do is is my hands straight up. And I cannot, like, I can recall so many times where I have been in such pain and mm. turmoil. But when you go to that place, and however you want to worship, that that's between you and Jesus, but to, to surrender whatever mm-hmm. it is and crying, just tears streaming down my face, but like the physical release you get when you mm-hmm. worship mm-hmm. and saying, nothing's, I may, my circumstance when I leave this place is going to be the same, but I will give you everything I I'll have. I'll be different. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I leave that room like I can fight again. Like yeah. that grit has come back. Mm-hmm. I am empty. I have left all my tears on the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry for the Kleenex. But I leave with such strength because of what I left on that mat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. good. I, I think this has been... So practical and so encouraging mm-hmm. for people who feel like those shackles are so tight and none are so tight that God can't help mm-hmm. break them open. Absolutely. So having these really um, identifiable steps, yeah. how to fight back. You are strong because He is strong. Mm-hmm. So we just pray for you today that you're encouraged that God breaks those shackles right off of you so that you can dance and praise and that you'll really see Him moving in your life even when you don't realize it, even when you're asking the why questions and not getting the answers. Trust in Him. Don't give up. Stand on His Word. Um, We have a free resource for you today that will help a lot. It's called Unshakable Trust, and it is a free audio download. You can get it. Uh, as we said, it's absolutely free. You got nothing to lose. So go check this out. It's at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. Of course, there you can find out about our other programs, catch up on all the podcasts. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends. But thank you so much for being one of us and sitting here with us and talking it out together. And Erica, you have been such Yay. fun and such a blessing. Thank, thank you for you. joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. We love yeah. you. We do. I love yeah. you too. You're one of our friends now, so uh, you're stuck with us. Absolutely. (laughs) For sure. We will see you all next time. Love you. 